This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, head over to BigHeadsMedia.com. Hi there, folks, and welcome to a TV Tuner special edition. It's Halloween, and I'm here with my co-host, as always. I'm Swanson, joined by my co-host and uh, secret werewolf, Stairmaster. Oh, oh, wait, should I say that, like, in a horny way? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, was his character horny in this? No, but... We have a lot of furry listeners out there. Mm, true. Uh, and with us, as always, is my other co-host and uh, increasingly desperate and poor, poorly written love interest, Kiore. <laughs> hey, I'm really into this guy who can barely talk. Yeah, why? Why <laughs> is like that? Bottom functioning man. Yeah, this. He's a. Uh... <laughs> He's really nice. He's a nice guy. This man who makes Forrest Gump look hip and with it. We have a lot of chemistry, you see. Oh, yeah. And it's just sort of radiating off the screen. He's like the Joker if he didn't have the part where he self-actualized and started killing people. So it's just the, the first 30 minutes of Joker over and over again. If the film had ended with Sandler deciding that he was going to burn those people alive, would it be a better so, movie? Wait, Yes. Let me just take a just take a step back here. Um, so, are you characterizing Joker descending into murderous madness as self actualization? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Keo. Joker in twenty nineteen is basically about a film about a man learning to find joy in life, and that joy yeah, is I mean, through murder. Yes. Oh, it's chaos. He does murder people, though. Yes, and it's incredibly cool. <laughs> Incredibly. Why the fuck did I say? <laughs> It's ingreeably cool. It's inagreeably cool. It's the morning. <laughs> That's right. I need it, to charge up my vocal cords and brain. Normally we record, you know, in the evenings or late at night, but uh, because this is an exclusive sort of TV tuners deal, uh, we're, we're, we're here in the morning in Denver. It's a chill 43 degrees. The wind is four miles per hour. Yeah. And the air quality yeah. is moderate. <laughs> yeah, I love that's how I love my air and my politicians. Yeah, I love just being up bright and early like this with my coffee cup. My coffee cup just says good morning on it. Oh, uh my coffee cup says keep chuglin. My coffee cup says tits up. <laughs> oh scantily clad anime woman on it. That's you know what, that's a pretty good coffee cup, I'm uh, gonna say. I would, no, I just said that to impress you. Uh-huh. I'm drinking from a cup. With the solar system on it. Oh. Well, I mean, I guess that's also pretty cool. Would you say would no, you say there's like a Big Bang Theory going on there? Ah, I guess. Yeah, the sun is oh. where the handle is. And it oh, it says around. Bazinga. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's got Pluto uh, on it. That's crazy. That is crazy. It's like no one pays attention to science. Uh, so you might be wondering why we're here at this time, at this spooky season. Giving you this uh, this sort of gift, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, well, Season's we're, greetings! <laughs> we're doing a little promotion here. Uh, you see, we've had a Buy Me a Coffee page up for a little bit, but now uh, it, we're, we're open for business, as they say. Uh, we're ready to give back by asking yes. you for more money. <laughs> as the Bleach cast begins to wind down uh, for the foreseeable future, we decided that... Uh, for any donations that you give us uh, to our Buy Me a Coffee page, you can request an episode, a special bonus app on any topic, and we'll we'll do it. Yeah, so this is strictly because to get up early like this and fill our coffee cups with this delicious, freshly brewed coffee, we actually need uh, money. Yes. That's right. We need someone to buy us a coffee, 
to get up this early. And how much does a cup of coffee cost in Denver, Swanson? Uh, apparently three dollars, but one dollar will do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're what's not up, we're not Cher? cheapskates here. <laughs> We're not we're not asking for much, um, but oh, yeah, each coffee is one dollar, so three dollars will get each of us our the cup of coffee we need. That's so the yeah, idea. You can request us to watch something, and if it's not like over seventy percent pornography, we probably will. And right, so, get, wait, is there is there a film that is like strictly thirty percent non pornography and then seventy percent pornography? Ah. Uh... There's got to be a few OVAs from the early 90s like that. I feel like that 30% would have lead... I think that's like cleanup duty, right? Between <laughs> what? <all> the... <laughs> what, a pornography where you get to see the guy cleaning up the cum? Oh, no, I meant yeah, for the... pornography. I meant for the watcher. Oh. <laughs> like that 30% is cleanup duty before you get back at it. <laughs> You Boy, and I just stop watching one sub busted. Is that how you? Swanson well, has a tremendous amount of stamina. Swanson's yeah. like the Native Americans. They use every part of the buffalo. I yeah, and I use in every part case, of the, the porn. In this case, it's a two-hour <laughs> Japanese adult video DVD. Yeah, and where they they spend thirty minutes after the sex talking about their feelings. <laughs> no, they just have sex again. Get a load yeah. of this, there, uh, Bustin. It makes me feel good. Okay, what about this? It's it's seventy percent porn and then thirty percent people driving cars. What? That's not bad. <laughs> to go to that the is, porn. That is definitely an OVA from the nineties. <laughs> yeah, it's people having sex and then driving cars to go to the place where they're having sex. <laughs> Maybe there's comedians in the cars. Oh, comedians in cars having sex. <laughs> yes. Shocking news. Jerry Seinfeld's sex tapes were leaked onto the internet this morning. I don't want I wouldn't want to watch that. <laughs> In which he penetrates Jay Leno. Hmm. Still no. Italy. Oh, can, can you get a load of this guy? <laughs> yeah, let's get a load of this. Literally. Oh my god, I can't believe it! <laughs> So, uh, what did we watch this? What did we what did we watch in this special Halloween edition of TBT? We watched uh, Be Halloween, Adam Sandler's retaliation against the film industry. <laughs> now, let me explain. Let me explain to the audience here. So, yeah, it was about I don't know. It was about midnight, and I I was just going to the library. You know, the TBT owners uh, book library. Mm-hmm. Yes. We only have yeah. doubleizations of TV shows. That's why our recaps are so bad. Yeah. And I, I uncovered a dusty tome. Um, and basically, it suggested to us that we needed to, this morning, get up early, mm-hmm. get our coffee on, and talk about this Adam Sandler project. And apparently, in some past life... Um, the TV Tuners crew was involved in some sort of Sandler ordeal. Ooh, that's true. Uh, yeah, the 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 true legacy of which is not available, but you can find some on YouTube if you're looking for it. Don't do that. Um, there was once a time, perhaps before TVT, even where we did uh, take the the journey of watching Sandler's filmography. But unfortunately, that has been largely lost to time. It's been, I think, what, 890 years or something like that? Uh, At least, yeah. About as old as Steve Buscemi's werewolf character is in this movie, allegedly. It's also as old as the universe. I think we, I don't remember where we stopped watching Sandler's filmography. I think it was... It was, uh... Another movie similar to this. It was the, uh... He's like a, a music guy? agent or something. Yes, he was a Hollywood guy. Yeah. And he lived in a Persian guy's pool house like Will Smith in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Uh, Sandy Wexler, that's the name of it that I <laughs> just looked up. Um, and right so, after that was like the Mayor Witch stories or something, which was apparently critically acclaimed. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Sandler has had something of a renaissance recently due to Uncut Gems. So it's <laughs> appropriate that this is his uh, follow-up. 
Well, he made this film apparently because Uncut Gems did not get an Oscar. Yeah, he had been uh, threatening to make the worst movie of all time if he didn't get nominated. And I feel like that's going to be a recurring theme on today's episode. Was he justified in making this film? (laughs) Oh, well, uh, hmm. (laughs) interesting. Do you guys support filmmaking as spite? Well, I feel like there's a lot of filmmakers who have made stuff out of spite. I mean, art is about emotion. But does spite produce enjoyable art, though? Uh, Probably not, right? I don't know if I can think of one off the top of my head that did. uh, Starship Troopers was the director going, this book is stupid. Oh, yeah, that's true. And instead of being a, a direct adaptation of a book about fascism, it was a parody of that kind of thing. Yes. Is that spite or just wanting to make fun of something? That's, uh, if that's not spite, then what is? What's your definition of spite, Keo? Um, I'm going to just stick with the dictionary on this one, so let me look that up. Spite is a desire to deliberately hurt, annoy, or offend someone. Mm. Yeah, that's what so, this is for sure, right? I That's probably art films that are deliberately made to make you feel uncomfortable. Anyways, gobble go gobble gigi gobble. It's Adam Sandler. That's right. Sandler's here and... In a um, movie Halloween. I will say this much for this movie. I don't think it's even the worst thing Sandler's made. No, no, no. It's kind of compared to, like, Grown Ups and uh, Twins. And Jack and Jill, yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, that's, that's what I... <laughs> It's kind of inoffensive compared to his worst outings, I would yeah, say. So but I don't know why I'm saying this at the start of the podcast. The thing I always dread about Adam Sandler is when the movie itself is worse than just boring. It's actually repulsive and unenjoyable <laughs> yeah. because of that. And thankfully, that is not. Uh, this one is not repulsive. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to go so far as to say it was un, it wasn't unenjoyable. But he uh, didn't. He didn't even make any jokes about people having feet fetish. That's true. No fe- no foot jokes in this. Well, I don't think it's a joke. I think Sandler's into that <laughs> definitively. Oh, no. I don't think Either it's... he's into it or he just thinks the idea of a foot fetish is just really funny for some reason. I mean, I could buy either one. Um, but yeah, this is Sandler at his this is Sandler with his like usual shtick here, right? He's he finds a funny voice and he just funny. rolls with it. <laughs> he's got like this funny. weird Homer Simpson thing going on this week. What do you mean? It's a little. He's got the Homer accent, but it's a bit. Uh, I, I guess I'm not really picking up on a Homer. He's, in this. he's pretty much doing one of my least favorite voices someone can do, which is just to kind of mumble. Yeah, he's got he's got real Nolan syndrome on this one, where you could you can't hear everything he oh. says. <laughs> Yeah, every time Adam Sandler talks, a hand simmer trombone is just like, boom! <laughs> I, I made this movie out of spite the desire to hurt. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, hey, it's Mike Tyson! Surprise Whoa. guest! <laughs> uh, you know what? For all the cameos in this movie, I'm surprised Mike Tyson was not one of them. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, another syndrome that I think is plagues this movie is uh, Latter-day Simpson syndrome, where there's just two, they have to fill in... Too many celebrities. With too many celebrities, so you can't like have an actual story going on that makes sense. How the how the fuck are Adam Sandler movies becoming zombie Simpsons? <laughs> I mean, enough time has passed <clears throat> that both of them are true. Um so that's the thing about this movie is that it's not I think the grossest thing that happens in this movie is the up close personal shot of him mixing soups together. Oh, God. Yeah, it is pretty. And that just might be my early morning stomach. But it was kind of, it was pretty nasty. I should mention that I was high as fuck when I watched this movie, so I was immune to disgust. You were like, ha, gnarly. I was like, wow. I just abstractly noted that's kind of gross. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's dig into it as much as we can with this movie because uh, our, another thing that is I think should be pointed out up front is that this movie is Bizarre. has a plot, but it's not really interested in following it for most of the film. 
It, a lot of this is just sort of cutaway gag, or not cutaway gags, just like cuts to different scenes where Hubie will walk in and like people will just be mercilessly fucking with him. It's borderline Lynchian. Yeah, like these people. It feels people, like he's just so, filming stuff. I think it's pretty common for Sandler movies uh, to have that, uh, especially in ones where he's playing like these weird characters. That they'll have a guy or maybe like two who just make fun of him constantly. Except in this movie, it's the entire town. Yeah. <laughs> Super <laughs> fucked. Everyone in this town hates this man's guts. How has he lived this long? Someone with America's rate of gun ownership, he should have died before graduating high school. There's constant uh, scenes to him riding his bike and having to dodge, like, people throwing pitchforks and, like, fridges at folding him. Folding chairs. Yeah. Like, imagine, it would have been funny if Steve Austin was one of the guys throwing folding chairs. That would have been good. Yeah, Especially why not? Especially considering he has been on multiple Adam Sandler films. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do like that uh, this is set in Salem, Massachusetts, which the sign says, a city of with which history. <laughs> so that's a fun pun. Um, and we also get Ben Stiller right up at top. Uh, this is a fun note. I fun in, uh, quotes, uh, wow. Adam Sandler or Ben Stiller is in this opening playing the, uh, Kryptonian. That's, <laughs> yeah. He's playing a Kryptonian named Hal L. No, uh, <laughs> Hal L is apparently the ba- the mean, uh, nursing home guy that he played in happy Gilmore. What? Wow. What but a, he's still- why is he Kryptonian, though? What, what a callback. Yeah. Uh, and also, you guys might have heard O'Doyle mentioned, which is the, the kids that pick on Billy Madison and Billy Madison. Oh, yeah. He was talking about an Adam Sandler cinematic universe. This is the Adam. Yeah, this is the ACU, the ASCU. This is, this is like when M. Night Shyamalan made that movie about the guy in the asylum. Split. They should have, uh, the, the next movie should be, like, a team-up of all Adam Sandler characters. Yes! Okay, here's the problem, though. Half of them are played by the same actors. <laughs> yeah, just well, get that- Sandler to play, like, it, it, just pull an Eddie Murphy, have him playing, like, half the cast. <laughs> <laughs> that they're all improv Yeah, it's, But it's even like, side characters ha- are recasted half the time. It's gonna be a mess. Uh... Listen, you get like little Nicky in there, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, and I guess uh, Hubie Dubois. Also, Mr. Also, Deeds. Yeah. Half of these characters have the same personality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah. They just meet and they merge together all a time cop. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and of course, you have to have the guy from The Water Boy. I don't even remember his name. I thought you were going to say the guy from Uncut Gems. Well, yeah, his body is just there. <laughs> oh, no. No, he's watching the film uh, play out at the end. He's doing a big bet on it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, this movie is packed to the brim with uh, celebrities and friends of Sandler. Uh, Kevin James is in this as a police sergeant who has, like, a big beard. Yeah, it's so big. It's like, why did you even cast Kevin James? You can't tell it's him. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I also can't tell if that's, like, a fake beard or a, a real beard. That he just grew out for this, but I'm pretty sure it's fake. I thought it was Dan Harmon for a second. <laughs> that would have been something. That would have been kind of funny. The idea that Dan Harmon would, one, put up with being in a Sandler movie, and two, Sandler and him would, like, interact at all. Oh, but imagine his neurotic energy. That'd be an amazing performance. He'd, yeah. he'd be struggling not to kill himself every second he's on camera. <laughs> and also uh, on camera. So we open up here with that Ben Stiller thing or whatever. Apparently this guy escapes a mental institution because we're calling to all of like the old school horror movies in this. Namely yeah, this Halloween very... and Friday the 13th. And also this, these camera angles are very boring in this. Like they're well, always waist high horizontal shots. Yeah, this is uh, directed by a uh, frequent uh, collaborator of Adam Sandler, Stephen Brill. He's done. He did Little Nicky, Mr. Deeds. This movie does is make sure to take all the horror tropes and make them hilarious by making them uh, anticlimaxes. Wait a yeah. minute. Is Adam Sandler just doing scary movie? Uh, a less funny version, probably, yeah. Like a scary movie 3. 
Yeah, this needs a guy from Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get this out of the way, guys. What was your laugh count on this movie? Uh, I'd have to scroll through my notes. Probably like one. Uh, I there was I a joke the first time he was scared by his decorations. <laughs> there was a joke in this that I thought was funny, but they played it too long and it got less funny. Which is that all of the news anchors were pl- were addressed as Harley Quinn, but then they called <laughs> attention to that fact. Oh and yeah, why does he? Al- he always does that. I think I typed like "lol" three times and "lmao" one time. Yeah, like it would have been funny if they had just not commented on if they had just not had someone comment. Oh, you're dressed as Harley Quinn too, really? It would have just been funny if they were all Harley Quinn, and then to have because it would be funnier when you cut to the one lady trick or treating and her daughter is also Harley Quinn. That's, yeah, Adam that's Sandler like a funny has this, gag. Has this thing where he doesn't trust the audience, and also he has no backbone. Yeah. So he takes he plays it as safe as possible with the script writing. Um, the actual thing that made me like chuckle, not like break down laughing or anything, was Shaq and this lady eating the <laughs> eating the pizza together, Lady in the Tramp oh. style. Yeah, the last line of this movie is also kind of funny. What's the last line of this movie? <laughs> Let's Lady in the Tramp this bitch. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> that's also funny because Shaq is saying it. <laughs> yeah, Shaq is doing some of the heavy lifting on this one. Yeah, maybe they should just make movies with Shaq. Yeah. Instead of Adam so, well, they tried that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My laugh count was zero. True. Not even during Shaq, d- uh, Lady in the Tramping, this bitch? No. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, on some level, it might be amusing, but I, it did not uh, make me laugh. I'll tell you what I didn't laugh at. Uh, Rob Schneider showing up in this piece of shit. Uh... <laughs> So yeah, there's an escaped patient from the mental asylum. It's October, it's Halloween time yeah. in this small midwestern town. So can you guess where we're going with this? Because Adam Sandler doesn't know. <laughs> um, Is he his character or the person? Both. <laughs> so we get introduced to our uh, character here, Hubie, 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 Hubie Halloween. Wobby. Hubie Dubois is his name. And he's like really he's at certain points really agile and at certain points not oh, agile. Oh, he's got at all. ultra instinct in this film. Yeah. But it like it depends on the moment. It depends on the scene he is in, whether or not he is super agile or not at all. Now see if Adam Seller was brave, he would have tried to do a Jackie Chan sort of action comedy sequence here. Oh yeah. But we never get that in the movie. The closer yeah. we get this first scene where the kids are throwing stuff at him and he's catching it. At one point they throw fluids at him and he catches it in his canteen. Drinks his it. His little yeah. thermo. Yeah, he thermos. has a sort of an inspector gadget like thermos that has all sorts of unique things that it does. It's a flashlight, an umbrella. But he's very unambitious with it. Yeah. So It does not fire a laser at any point in this film. No. It does it does act as a vacuum though. So he's he's an inventor of some renown, apparent or not renown, but he is an inventor who could like make this stuff. But he's, I guess, stuck in Salem. And I guess he's an un- unemployed. He works at a deli, as we learn. Oh, yeah, works at a deli. Okay, I keep forgetting if he just went to the deli if he worked there, but yeah, but it's not really very mentioned. But first, yeah, so he's dodging all the kid stuff, and then he sees his love interest played by, uh, who is it, Watson? Uh, this is Julie Bowen. Um, I'm trying to think of stuff yes, she's been in. Yes, and possibly hot. Yes, uh, she's, she was from, she's in Modern Family. Um, like 10 out of 10. Yeah, like, of course, it's a Adam Sandler movie. She's an impossibly hot uh, love interest. She was also the so love he- interest of uh, Happy Gilmore. So Hubie sees her and crashes into a car and flips over. Yes. And she sort of just walks by. Looks. This uh this might be the single worst written female character that I've <laughs> seen in the Sandler incredible. movie. I was struggling with this, trying to figure out if the film was doing this on purpose or not. I f- I can't it- tell because I don't know if they were trying to make us believe that she was like a killer, like a murderer. Or if the film cared enough to even, like, do that. Because it's weird. This film, 
this film does a decent <sighs> job of like using red herrings effectively. <laughs> effectively. Well, until the third act. It's like this film is trying to hang lampshades on things, but the film itself is a lamp. Yeah. I, I think what happened with this movie is Sandler set out to make a film with a combo of red herrings and anticlimaxes. Well, yeah. Where... I mean, obviously the best red herrings should not make you feel like you've like been disappointed or let down. <laughs> so yeah, Adam the... Sandler like, has his violent bike accident. Uh, and and that's like, the other problem with the red herrings in this movie, though, is that uh, they were never interesting in the first place. Yeah. We just expect them to go somewhere, and then when they don't, we're just like, okay, all right. And yeah, especially, that's... it gets especially egregious in the third act when all these red herrings just sort of give up. <laughs> oh, They're yeah. Like, sort of like, so uh, all they right, literally say, oh, we're leaving the movie now. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's like the monster's there, and he's like, and you're terrified. It's like right in front of you, and then it just falls over. It's a cardboard cutout. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> but then the real monster, he's behind you, and he's going to get you, but then that one is also a cardboard cutout. And then in the, th- in, in the corner, there's the actual monster, but then it's just your mother. So, yeah, uh. Adam Sandler hits his car. And you think you're going to get, like, a funny pratfall, and he's going to be humiliated from his love interest, but he sort of plays it off and blends in with the local decorations. Yeah. I don't know how to feel about that. I don't think Adam Sandler's willing to take the piss out of himself enough. I think Sandler thought it would, the fall would be funny enough. Mm. <clears throat> so, yeah. She so, smiles yeah. at him. He goes to work at the deli, and here comes Ray Liotta. <laughs> yeah, Ray Liotta's role in this movie is uh baffling so he plays, he plays uh, an italian <laughs> yeah his role in this movie is italian and uh an italian who like i guess his dad died torment. and that's a joke <laughs> that they play with he's, he's, he's like yeah he's like uh jonathan banks in that one episode community it's my birthday oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah when he's trying to get the point yeah he um like there's a really baffling scene uh in the last third of this movie where he hits on a woman who was clearly like did she go to high school i don't know what at most yeah like i'm pretty sure she goes to high school uh and when he strikes out he's like well time to go beat up adam sandler yeah so he comes to this he comes to this deli in order to prank him He's yeah. like 60 years old at this point. Well, yeah, because it's fucking Ray Liotta. And, yeah, uh, he he pranks Hugh, he pranks Hubie, and he does this, uh, this is the thing with this movie, All uh, Hubie is like, he loves Halloween, uh, but he's also uh, <sighs> Afraid easy, of everything. To, easy to scare, yeah. And, um... To an unbelievable degree as well. Yeah. I am assuming you guys turn this off as soon as the credits roll, right? Yeah, uh, I watched the credits. Oh, okay. So you I was you noticed this? You noticed this too, then maybe. Um, so all of the credits have like uh, bloopers with the actors yes. in them, and I didn't expect of, him to do the Jackie Chan thing. Yeah, well, and all of I thought it was funny that uh, all the other bloopers were like someone does like a flub or something, and they laugh. Uh, for Ray Liotta's, he does a flub, and he's like, "Fuck, fuck, oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> There's one where Adam Sandler does some amazing improv, and but everyone fucks it up by laughing at it, so they couldn't use it. Yeah. Well, I, do you think that happens a lot in the movie where Sandler says something that's funnier than the script, <laughs> Probably. and then they're just they're just like everyone laughs, and he's just like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> oh, I don't like this energy. <laughs> Back to the script, guys. <laughs> I worked very hard on writing this. Uh, so he goes home and uh, he's met with uh, he's met by Steve Buscemi's character, who uh, oh we get to introduce a Kevin James character at this point. Oh really? yeah, the cop. Yeah, he, yeah he's watching he, a video of a guy backflipping onto his balls, which is funny. Yeah, maybe a little. I think that's really interesting movie. shot, like cinema, where Adam where he's trying to edge Adam Sandler out of talking to him by raising his window. Oh, yeah. So Adam Sandler raises his head, and so you just see his lips underneath the car hood. <laughs> That's something. Um, I'll I'll be honest though. There's nothing that Kevin James' 
character does in this that's particularly... Ow. The closest thing he does to comedy in this is uh, he pops a Hershey kiss into his mouth and then the rapper gets stuck in his beard. (laughs) Um, All all the other... Like, it's it's weird because Kevin James is not very funny in this, but his uh, police sergeant, Keaton Thompson... (laughs) Is actually oh yes pretty pretty okay in this in criminally comparison. wasted in this movie yes well they both were they didn't do anything the closest thing Keenan Thompson does in this is react to Rob Schneider's character and the Wolfman sort of <laughs> yeah. like their relationship I, I mean yeah he's obviously more wasted but both of them had nothing to do in this movie at all no like e- even if um... yes have Kim and James shoot someone <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fun well the. Or at least have him fire his gun into the air all a la point break. Look, here's the thing about Adam Sandler movies is that you can't introduce that kind of lethality into them because it it would it would uh it would no longer be it would no longer be an airy uh little <laughs> tidy Adam Sandler film that you could put a nice little bow on and watch in the background. Yeah. Oh yeah, you'd have to think about it. He does have a movie he made yeah. recently called Murder Mystery. Do you think anyone actually died in that? Uh, one person. <laughs> and it was off screen. It wasn't even the victim they're investigating. Yeah. See, that's the thing, though. Earlier Sandler films weren't really afraid to, like, kill somebody. That The guy who teaches Happy Gilmore how to golf dies. Oh, yeah. Old people are cowards. You see this with, like, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. Their later films are just more boring. Yeah. Like, compare Indiana Jones 4 to Indiana Jones 1. Like, There's I'm no pretty nasty sure. nasty kills in that. I'm pretty sure someone dies in Billy Madison too, but like as a joke. Yeah, well, that's the that's the main problem with trying to do a horror movie with no kills dying in it. There, yeah, there's no there's no stakes, there's no tension at all. Have yeah. someone get their arm chopped off at the very least. If, if it's supposed to be, even if it's supposed to be funny, uh, to have it work, there needs to be some kind of credible threat. You can make arm chopping funny. It happened in The Simpsons. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually not very hard to make a. A, like a funny kill but it'll be credible because somebody actually died yeah mm. well adam sandler's not setting out to make Shaun of the dead here you know he's not <laughs> he's not I don't think he's, he's seen not Shaun of the dead no i don't think he well yeah i don't know if he would actually care enough to watch it um but like he's just you know this is just him hanging out with friends making a movie uh no vacation set up this time so that's interesting i don't think he's gone on a vacation well, movie uh since joining netflix He's on vacation in Salem. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's there to watch the leaves change. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Steve Buscemi's character is like this friendly oh, yes. neighbor. Who, I uh, love this. I was like, the whole movie should just be about Adam Sandler befriending him. Yeah. Learning to enjoy life. Imagine if the movie was about him befriending a guy who turns out to be a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> or a vampire. And then you have the werewolf killing people and him being, like, conflicted. Because yeah. it's, his, it's his first real friend. Werewolf cannot kill anybody. No, this werewolf only kills, apparently, uh, a farm animal. Mm. and that's We that's also it. don't get to see yeah. get murdered. But we do get to see the farm, o- uh, the farm owner, who is played by Huel. Play- <laughs> <laughs> um, and What's I, his name? LeVar Crawford? Lavelle Crawford, yeah. Lavelle. I was, like, elated the moment he showed up and then saddened that he didn't do anything. Oh, he just, yeah, he plays black man who really wants to murder his wife. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, like, the scene devolved into couple bickering. Wow. Borderline domestic abuse. Yeah. Um, and... Bitch, I wish I could run your head over with a steamroller. I think the thing that makes uh, this movie better than some of the later other later day Sandler films that we've perused is that Sandler's character isn't an asshole. Yes. Cause also, uh, you he's mentioned not on screen. Yeah. For large stretches, sort of well, like Dragon Ball Z. That also, I think helps is that you don't have to hear his, his voice every scene. The entire time. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, that's the thing with a lot of later day Sandler films. It is sort of like the Homer, Sim- the jerk ass Homer thing. <laughs> Yes. Where a lot of later day Sandler characters are just jerks for no good reason. Mm-hmm. Um, like I seem to recall in a lot of his like old like uh what was the movie with him and Jennifer Aniston where he's pretending to they're pretending was to be a Mr. couple. Deeds? 
Just no. Just go with it? Just go with it. Yeah, where he's, like, Our- mercilessly shitty to, like, an assistant of hers <laughs> for no oh, good yeah. reason. Isn't it because she's overweight? Uh, it, it's, I don't even know what the reason, or I think it was. maybe she just wasn't attracted by Hollywood standards. Yeah, she didn't fit maybe Adam Sandler's, uh, vague description of an attractive woman. <laughs> oh, your eyes are off by one centimeter. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be incinerated. Um, it's also the movie where Nick Swartzen fucks a goat. Uh, well, he just gives it mouth to mouth, but. Um, so yeah. Hilarious. This character um, is, like, a bit more likable in the sense that, like, he seems to be a stand-up guy who everyone around him inexplicably hates. It's sort of like Jesus, which I think is, I think this film might be a meta-commentary, Adam Sandler examining his own works. And, like, the town hating him is, like, regular film goers, normal people like you and I. Ooh, I think you're giving him too much credit. I, <laughs> I mean, he, he's he's successful, so... Oh, yeah, he's successful. His character's successful at the end of this movie, too. Yeah, true. But he's he's successful because of his early work. Oh, are you saying Hubie is successful because of his family having lived here for 400 years? Oh! Hmm. Yeah, I think think the metaphor kind of starts to fall apart No, he's successful because he ignores the haters. Because if he ignores the haters, he, he wins them over by not murdering people. Yeah! Just like Adam Sandler in real life. So Adam Sandler's basically saying that this movie is a threat. That unless you turn, you know, turn around and um, repent, start liking Adam Sandler, he's going to start doing the murders. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So he he wants that. What was it? An Oscar? Yes, he won an Oscar for Uncut Gems, which he, he should, probably should have been nominated for. Yes. Yeah, so he wants that Oscar. If there's no Oscar, the killings will start. That's mm-hmm. what you're saying. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he he is signed up to do other movies that he hasn't written or produced, so we'll see. Maybe he is trying to well, actually... We won't see unless you pay us. <laughs> That's right. Or it's Halloween again. <laughs> it's buy me a coffee slash TV tuners. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we get uh, some other people who show up oh, in this. We get a fart joke from Adam Sandler farting and Steve Buscemi saying it's fine, it's natural. And that's oh, a yeah. really weird exchange. It's a very strange exchange, because normally what you do with a fart joke is it, it's meant to be like, it's a, it's a weird situation, for, or like it's an awkward situation for it to happen in. Or, or you like, have the camera pan over and there's like, you see that some object has created a sound that sounds yeah. like a fart. It's very out of place. But instead, he just does it, and then there's like, oh, it's okay. It's very yeah, weird. It's, so he gets, goes home to his house next his door. Mom. It's a non-joke. And his mom, what it was. What's the shirt his mom's wearing? I forgot to write this down. Uh, Something about boners. Boner yeah. donator. Yeah, boner, boner donator. Boner donor. Yeah, and suddenly, suddenly, this is kind of brilliant, because it explains why Adam Sandler's character talks like that. He's clearly got insane levels of trauma. All of the Joker. Yeah, that tracks. Um, also, we learned that his dad died at some point in the future. Or oh, in the yes. past. Just like the Joker. Yeah. And just like the Joker, his mom is... Uh... Well, we'll get to his mom. <laughs> Twisted, we'll say. We get, a, we get a gag here of her losing track of who's been... Who's who of the bullies... And uh, Adam Sandler mentions one of the families that was bullying him was the Epsteins. Yeah, I knew I Why heard you that, that, and I knew you were going to mention it. <laughs> Why? The gaslighting got swatched. Was so Sandler on the flight guts. logs? I think he went to a different island. Oh. He probably knows a different guy. Uh, if I found out that Adam Sandler was a pedophile, I feel like I would like my world would crumble. This scene, like he's he makes bad movies, sure, but he seems like a <laughs> decent man when you like see him out and about. Well, I don't think that like Bill Clinton likes to fuck kids. I think he likes a fa- feeling of power from fucking one. Mm, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I, uh, I think uh, I think Epstein is just a just not very rare of a surname if you're Jewish. Probably, I think. probably. Yeah. yeah, because in The Expanse, the guy invented the fusion drive that makes straight line interplanetary travel possible is named Epstein. 
and the yeah, drive's right, named after him. Sandler is a canonically Jewish in this film, as, he, as they point out. And he's a no Zionist in real life. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. we don't know if he is in this film, although I think it's safe to say probably. So we have his mom, like, basically monologue to Adam Sandler's character what the plot of the film is and what he should be doing. <laughs> Get this hackneyed line. This town is as full of bullies now as it was in the 1600s. <laughs> it's That's very... what it was in the 1600s, was bullies, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. That's what you would ah! call them. Ah, yeah, the Puritans are bullies. <laughs> mm, yeah. And it's time we take them down a peg. <laughs> Are they even still around, the Puritans? Well, they're around in other ways. Mm, interesting. What should I think about? <laughs> Some would say our culture still hasn't gotten over that. <laughs> Something to think about. Best wishes. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, I was thinking, hmm, so Buscemi's probably not the villain, because that's too obvious of a red herring. He's too likable. So I was thinking the love interest would be the villain, but then I was like, Sandler would never actually do that. <laughs> Oh, that'd be too cool. Yeah. Like, I, there was a moment near the end where I thought, oh, are they actually going to have the love interest be the villain? Because that would be like, that would no. improve my thoughts on this movie dramatically. Adam Sandler must get the puss puss. Yeah. You can also tell that that's not the case because the movie was too far from being over. <laughs> that's true. Yes. Yeah. Um. So instead, she's not really a murderer so much. She's just like, I guess, real horny <laughs> or like real desperate. <laughs> Um, Sandler. How would you describe this who, character? Because this is like the worst written character in the film, probably. She's the least credible love interest I've ever seen, and I can't tell if that's the joke. Yes. Like, the lamp, the movie is literally a lamp. So you can't hang a lampshade on it. Yeah. I guess like, you can. <laughs> normally, Sandler tries with making the love interest, like, giving some sort of hack-eyed reason why the love interest falls for Adam Sandler. <laughs> no, in, in this case, uh, we just find out she's, like, super into him on her first appearance. Yes. yes. So since we know about him, she really likes Adam Sandler's character. She Adam has Sandler's kids. character is too afraid to... Yes, yeah, single mother. Adam Sandler's too afraid to ask her out. Uh, by the way, the two young daughters of hers, played by Adam Sandler's actual kids. Uh, one of the teens literally idolizes him in this film, which is kind of fucked up. Yeah, like, that's his youngest that. daughter. <laughs> so we get a, we also get another Joker she- scene here where, parallel, where he breaks his window on accident and his mom yells at him. Oh, yeah. yeah sort of the, like when Joker shoots the wall in Joker 2019. With the with the guy who escaped the mental institution, they keep doing the constant Halloween references. Oh yes, this is like a scene from Halloween, the recent Halloween. Yeah, where he only puts on he's, the pig mask. Only instead, he's peeing everywhere. <laughs> oh. I think it, we jumped ahead a, a little it's a, bit. It's, it's a play on no, not really, not too far ahead. Uh, it's playing on you know that trope of bedwetting being a sign of like uh, mental you know, illness, s- serial killer type stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, uh, yeah, I feel like we have to jump all over the place in this, because, again, I I finished watching this movie about an hour before we recorded, and Ooh. it's already blending together into a fine sort of soup concoction, similar to what he puts <laughs> in his thermos. Yeah, I watched it last night, so it's, like, vividly contained in all of its entirety in my head. Wow, maybe I should get high, maybe I should get high. <laughs> So yeah, it's so the next morning we get this we get the scene with the news anchors. There's an elderly woman wearing a t shirt that says I shaved my balls for this. I think that's his mom. I thought I mean, maybe. Because I think the gag with his mom is that she's just wearing t shirts that she got at a thrift store and doesn't know the meaning of. Yeah. And then we get Heel and his wife talking to Kevin James about the pig murder. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, the, that devolves into them just bickering, so he just, like, leaves, I guess. He literally asked a police officer for his gun so he can shoot her. Yeah. Um. So, Hubie is, uh, he works as Halloween Monitor, which I guess is a title that has some sort of meaning. Or they yes. just give it to him it, to make him feel nice. Uh, I don't know. Is it, was it self-appointed or what? I feel like, yeah, we're at the museum now, where this is established, right? Yes. Um, and he, like, there's a weird scene where he oh, gets, yes. we get introduced to Tim Meadows' character, uh, one of the Hennessy's, 
who is another person who inexplicably hates Hubie. Hub- I thought it was going to be like a rival character that they'd have to team up at the end, like Amaro and Char. <laughs> yeah, no. Instead, he just uh, they just he just makes it's fun an of asshole. him. He's a huge asshole. So, Later, when Hubie is at the drive-in, he's with his wife, who doesn't love him, and uh, that's her whole trick. And oh, she doesn't want to fuck. Him, specifically. <laughs> she yeah. desperately wants to have sex with someone else. Uh, yeah, what's up with these with this film and... Sexual pathology. I was saying sexual... Uh, not sexual. Uh, dysfunctional relationships supposedly being funny. I think Sandler thinks that's funny. Oh, Adam Sandler's a family man, so he's examining all the relationships in his life. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, a like C plot at best with the um, with Julie Bowen's son. Oh he goes yeah, to this, he's... he goes to this teen party. The and... the plot is about him progressing from childhood to teenhood. I guess, and but what, like, what's is there a dilemma he faces? No, he just um, instantly he gives the girl a Kit Kat, and that's when and then they're dating, yeah, and she gives him brain. Uh, allegedly um yeah so, so yeah, adam sandler's at the museum and he's talking to martha bowens about his neighbor and she's like hey that's the name of my dead great grandfather oh yeah and for some reason adam sandler's like immediately concludes that something supernatural is going on and goes to the graveyard it's so strange I, mean, I don't it, know it, how this connects to i think mean, i know how it connects but I don't know how he connects these things. <laughs> also, we do get a funny her trying to flirt with him and him just being sandbagging it. Yeah. Which was kind of amusing. Um, I think the strangest part about the this thing that he finds at the funeral home or at is the, Michael Chelkis. Well, Michael Chick Chickless being here is strange. Um and he does again, he's just a guy who hates Hubie for no reason, despite being the preacher. <laughs> um, also, the idea of Michael Chiklis as someone who went through the process of becoming a pastor of some sort. I kind of just want to watch a movie about Pastor Michael Chiklis. Yeah. Just forget about Adam Sandler. Uh, if you're not aware, Keo Rain, this is the man who starred in The Shield. He's also on a few episodes of Seinfeld. Maybe one. The Shield. Is that is that the show where... Where uh, he made you suck? <laughs> yes! That's right, yeah. Well, that was his boss who was made to suck. He just oh. finds out about him, blackmails him with it at the end of the series. <laughs> Thankfully, wow. he, doesn't make, uh, he doesn't make Sandler suck. Oh, that'd be great. Would it? That'd be funny. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, so um, yeah, Ray Liotta's dad died, and the funeral's going on right now. Meanwhile, Adam Sandler's committing grave robbery. Yes. Not really, though. He's just sort of moving dirt. Um, but He's just clearing dirt from in front of a, a tombstone. Yeah. Um, and he, he makes this discovery that the person uh, who is living next door to him is alive. Is that uh, what it was? Made, yeah, the tombstone has no death date on it. So w- that means nothing. <laughs> like, I don't know what... <laughs> Why does it have a death date? If they put a tombstone down. It's because that's the plot is op- is empty for when he dies. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a family plot. Oh, that makes sense. Um, but they never, no one ever says anything about this. And Adam Sandler seems perplexed by the, like, H- Hubie seems perplexed by the idea of a, a, ma- a grave that has no death date on it. I would be too if it was like 1600 or whatever the fuck it was. Oh yeah, I guess it was. No, it was. What, what was it like? 1951. I think it's like 200 years old in this movie. The werewolf I think is, it's but he's using a fake name. He's revealed to have a different name because this is super convoluted for no good reason. Oh, he just steals the identity of the still alive great grandfather. Yeah. What the. F- there's no reason for really that to be a sense. thing, but they do it anyway. Oh, it's the North French Miami Blues starring Alec Baldwin. Oh, where Alec Baldwin steals the name of someone? Yes. This needs more scenes of uh, Adam Sandler beating up a Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe Michael Chiklis breaks someone's fingers. Yeah. <laughs> um, What's your name? Trouble. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the funeral scene is pretty baffling. Um, they oh, yes, we get Ray, Ray Liotta pranking him. By tossing him into own, a grave. His own father's grave. <laughs> yes. And then, um, and then uh, Hubie gives the gravekeeper a heart, fatal heart attack. Presumably. Only kill in this movie. Oh, yeah. Hey, there you go, Keo. There's a kill. That's not a kill. That man might be dead. We won't see him again. Mm-hmm. If it's not a confirmed death, and it wasn't done by the monster either, it's not a kill. Ah, uh, you're saying Adam Sandler, is it a monster? Well, I think He's he clearly supernatural. Killer. He's a serial killer. Mm. Interesting. Um, so yeah, he, uh, at this point, the Halloween stuff, uh, the Halloween antics have begun. Um, he gets told to go check in on his friend, on his neighbor, cause he heard some strange noises. Uh, he goes in there and finds that he's transforming into a werewolf, but doesn't really do anything about it. Uh huh. And then we have cut to this elementary school assembly. That's in the oh, middle yeah, of recess. Oh yeah, this is before the Halloween stuff starts, yeah. And the school is so underfunded that like, we have first through sixth graders. In the same hall. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he has this assembly, and then uh, he gets scared by a kid's costume, and they all decide to throw food at him. Oh, he throws a microphone at the kid when he's scared, and that <laughs> injures the kid. That's pretty So this funny, is basically though. commentary on police brutality. Oh? You read or maybe a lot that's a later this. scene. I, I think that's a later scene in this movie. Nighttime comes, Halloween has begun, Hubie's yes, a, hollow, a Halloween Yes, Hotline Miami monitor. guy shows up, puts on the pig mask. Yeah. We get a scene of uh, Hubie's mom telling him that Act 2 is starting by telling him something weird is going to happen and oh, he yeah. shouldn't go out. His mom sort of acts as uh, a bridge between each of the acts of the movie. <laughs> um, so what happens in this second act can best be described as a bunch of loose scenes of Hubie sort of stumbling around. And people getting abducted. Yeah. Also, there's a kitty at one point. Oh, yeah, there's I, I just have in my notes, kitty, three exclamation marks, followed by, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't... So, um, he shows up at this teen party, which is, I guess, just like a, a, a get-together with the teenagers. No parent, no parental supervision or anything. <laughs> yeah, and he's just being a morality police. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, the kid he works with in the deli is like, I'm gonna tell him there's someone in the corn maze that happens to be right next to this place that we're partying in. Mm-hmm. And it's like a real elaborate corn maze. Yeah, it must be like maintained meticulously. Oh, I assume that Salem is a tourist hotbed. They have corn maze for visitors to have fun at. So he goes in there, and um, that's why Salem's on vacation there, by the way. Yes, <laughs> and uh, he goes in there to find the lost child, and because um, our uh, uh, our love interest son is there he has a, con- a crisis of conscience and is like we should go help that guy because reasons so they yeah, go searching know. for him this whole thing is so it's such a big nothing of a scene so he goes I've... looking for the kid in the in the corn maze uh the two uh the, there's some like teenage bickering going on where suddenly it, it goes nowhere it goes nowhere he pun- he gets the uh Tommy, I think, is this uh, kid's name. He gets punched in the face, and then his love interest is like, hey, why don't you shove it? And then uh, he's like, whoa, you care for me. And that's it. That's the end of their story, but we're still an hour left in this film. Yeah, I don't know when this happened, but there's also a scene of Adam Sandler on the street side talking to uh, love interest, and she walks off. And he's oh, like, yeah. She's so beautiful. Or yeah. no, this elderly woman who looks like the old lady fish from Spongebob walks up behind him and is like, I'm asexual, but I would smash that. Yeah, it sounds like the uh, writer's just learned. She specifically learned, like, says, I'm asexual, but she's making me horny or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's good to know that Sandler still has the uh, intense nuance of today's sexual uh, this politics. Woman, th- this actress looks like the, can I come to lady from The Simpsons. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's good to know that Sandler's learned nothing since the days of Chuck and Larry. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah that, 
If a woman is attractive enough, asexual people will be turned on by them. It's true. We also get a montage, I think, at some point around here of Adam Sandler being startled by stuff. And one of them is just someone opening the bathroom door on him. And it's like, I would have that reaction. Yeah, if I was taking a huge shit and someone opened the door, I'd probably freak out. <gasps> yeah. I don't know if I would freak out quite the same way Sandler does. I'd probably be more like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so Adam Sandler's in the corn maze. He's searching. And the team's about to prank him, but someone comes up behind him. And, and we don't see what happens, but we hear the team shouting, no! And Sandler, and I, I guess, echo- doesn't yes, hear this. It's reminded of his dead father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he so thinks we it's get, him. We get another scene similar to this where he goes to a drive-in. Um, and... Oh, yes, because the the teen, the asshole teen, drops a movie ticket. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, because he's talking, he goes to the police, and Kevin James, since he's been used to Hubie just sort of making dumb claims to him all the time, is just like, hey, listen, I'm gonna make you a special officer. You don't oh, yes, talk to us another... at all, and you just go do whatever the fuck you're gonna do. <laughs> yes, we get another funny montage of Adam Sandler barging in on Kevin James in the past. Yeah. And each each outfit he's wearing is increasingly more ridiculous. So the last one, pieces. yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's wearing like an afro and a beard, fake beard. And he comes in, and he, uh, Keenan Thompson has cl- the closest thing to a funny line that he gets in this uh, sh- movie, which is <laughs> him just saying, "I didn't even know it was him." <laughs> and that, yeah, that cut that cut that perfectly back to the present. Yeah. Um, that is one thing I can say for, uh, Sandler movies. They do seem to be edited, <laughs> yeah. which is not something I can say for all movies. It's better than taking three. That's, <laughs> that's right. Um, so yeah, uh, he goes to this drive in and, uh, they, they start pranking him. So he runs away. This is when he uses his thermos as like a batarang. Or not a bat ring. What's the what's the thing that Batman uses? A grappling uses? hook. Yeah, like a grappling hook, and then he hits a tree, and that's a big funny scene. Yeah, my notes became more abstract, and I don't know where I'm at at the movie. It's just like, what the fuck? This is like the opposite of thought unfinished. This character is so impossibly passive. Lol, they're playing the Twilight Zone theme. It's Why the are thing. We doing Jaws now. <laughs> It's the thing with this movie is that uh, once you get into the second act, it becomes like a loose collection of funny bits. Funny. And by funny bits, you mean uh, jokes that fall over and don't go anywhere? Yeah, uh, it's jokes that, that like inc- have a heart attack before they get to the punchline. Bits that are incongruous with reality. Yeah. Or or bits that start with the punchline and then work from there. Mm-hmm. Um. So there's a bit here that I find particularly uh, ridiculous, which is that uh, he goes into the woods and he finds uh, Steve Buscemi, who is now... Pretty much a werewolf. Um, I, th- I think there's like a big stretch with that Adam Sandler here. We get the mayor being asked to shut down Halloween. Oh, yeah. By uh, the child James. got abducted. Yeah. Um, but like the mayor in jar- jars, he can't, he needs that tourist money. But uh, Walter is like, hey, I'm a werewolf or something. He's like, oh, huh, that's strange. And then he runs away. Um, so. Adam Sandler does not give chase to him in this time. He does the next time he sees what he thinks is him. Oh, yeah, he finds a cute doggo. Yeah, and he thinks it's him and chases him. Um, And tries to crush his skull. But the Hennessy's uh, are abducted as well. Yeah, he chases the dog into a haunted house and they follow for some reason. Yeah, um... And he, he follows the house. He gets scared in the haunted house. The haunted house is pretty much just an excuse for Sandler to do a bunch of, a bunch of like, ooh, ee, ah. Yeah, there's a scene where one of the attendants grabs him by the leg and he just starts screaming for so long she feels bad. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was, that, that was kind of funny, I guess. Now that I'm thinking no. of it. Well, I mean, you are laughing. <laughs> you are yeah. chuckling. I, I would give it a chuckle if I was paying attention at that point. Um, no, I I was paying full attention to it, and it was more annoying. Than oh, so okay. <laughs> wow. Keo, I, th- I think Keo just doesn't have Halloween spirit. No, I Keo's think, probably right. I think Stare being high just really makes everything 
you can't review comedy films while high. It just no, it doesn't no. work there. Oh, okay. All my opinions are wrong then on this episode. Confirmed. Well, Stare, I have a big important question for you that I don't think you answered. What's your laugh count? I think it, we, you asked me that earlier, and I said it was like four or five, like three lols. So in the in the LMAO. in sort of the succession here, Keo is sort of the staunch critic. I'm sort yes. of the in between, and you are sort of the fan of this. Yes, it's like a weird inversion of the tr- typical TV tuners formula. Yeah, where I'm usually the harshest on anything. And I do think you can accredit that to being intoxicated. Many are saying this. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people are saying it. A lot of people are saying this, and the reason why I say this is because I know what you think of Sandler films, and this was yes. not a departure from what Sandler films do. It's okay. really not. <laughs> okay, you're right. Yeah. In fact, in some ways, um, it's worse. <laughs> Specifically with the female characters, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is kind of misogynistic. Every woman in this movie is abominable. I forgot about the part where he goes to the diner and the uh, Julie Bowen's character literally just says, like, you're the best. You can do anything. When, yeah, when is this? Uh, it's near. I, I mean, I've lost the plot at this point in the movie. Yeah, the film becomes a blur here because uh, so he's in the haunted house. The Hennessy's get kidnapped. Steve Buscemi has chained himself, has handcuffed himself to the radiator. And here comes my le- avoid- I groaned at this part in the movie. Where he chains himself to the radiator, and then the guy in the pig mask shows up. And he takes off his pig mask, and who is it? It's fucking Rob Schneider. And he's like, we need to talk. And you're like, oh, is there some sort of intrigue going on? But he says it in, like, a boring way. Not like, we need to talk. He says it in a Rob Schneider sort of way. Yeah, so that whole plot point where where we have an escaped uh, mental institution person... Uh, on the loose, wearing a pig mask. No, it's it's fine. So he's yeah. actually, he's nice. We learn that he broke out of the mental institution to go after Steve Buscemi's character, who is a werewolf. Yeah, Ray Liotta shows up to groom a teenager. I forgot he was in the movie because we'd made it feel like it had been six hours since his last appearance. Oh, yeah. And this is where we get the police brutality scene where uh, Hubie maces someone. He maces someone at the haunted house. And he screams, I'm a dentist, I help people, why would you do this to me? Oh, yes. Uh, yes played by uh... forgotten SNL cast member Mikey Day. So, yeah, they have a town meeting. An emergency meeting is called. And they all conclude that Hubie is the one abducting people. Based off of, like, nothing, really. <laughs> this film briefly turns into the Warriors slash First Blood. Oh, we should mention that there is a radio lady who sounds just like the lady from the radio on... The warriors. Once, uh, once Hubie is confronted by the uh, by the Kevin James officer, mm-hmm. uh, that's when we officially enter the third act, which is the biggest mess. Oh uh, yeah, so he kind of has this like hero's journey moment where he finds the mystic figure of advice, you know, like the Yoda. Would you say he goes to the? Would you say he's on a hero's journey? Uh, yes. Okay. I mean, this is so he goes to the radio station and he finds out the sexy DJ is played by Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's a fun gag. Yeah, that made me laugh. It is kind of a fun gag, I'll be honest. But it's I'm just really there for the part where he's <laughs> where he's blading the tramp in that sandwich. Also, he has a wife who sounds like Yajirobe. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty good. Hey, Shaq, why don't you come take a senzu bean? So yeah, Shaq basically gives Hubie divine wisdom in order to... He basically tells him what the third act is. He mentions to him that uh, his love interest is into him, and he's like, oh, huh. I couldn't pick up any of the very obvious clues. (laughs) It's not so much divine information as much as something that anyone could observe at any time. Yeah. Although apparently Kevin James is also uh, 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 unbelieving of this. There's a there's a bit here that doesn't need to have been in here that doesn't make any sense, which is that Kevin James' character and Alan Sandler's love interest are divorced. It doesn't add anything. The two never actually interact. I don't think they have a scene together. Yeah, they don't. They don't have a one-on-one scene ever. Yeah, it's it's probably the one of the most pointless uh, plot points that 
could have been put in a movie. Yeah. Well, you got to explain where those kids came from. You can't have children out of wedlock, Swanson. That would not. They're foster kids. Oh. Yeah, she's... She has foster kids. They're not even oh, a yes, result of the wedding. She's, she's like the female the version of Hubie. But for some reason, nobody bullies her. Probably because she's hot. That's, yeah. That makes and sense. because she can talk. Yeah, she has like she has she doesn't have the uh, the mental she have the brain issues damage. that the I don't issue. think we've properly really explained how annoying his voice is. We haven't really discussed that enough, I think. Where he sort of sounds like this. No, no a little worse. bit like thir- forty percent more annoying. <laughs> you gotta be safe. You gotta be safe you got to be safe there for Halloween, guys. You got you got to go out there. And be very careful, dude. Also, Sha- Shaquille Daniel is also like also the burner. The burner phone of the killer is this number. Don't yeah, like what? <laughs> How does he have that? <laughs> didn't, didn't, We've got didn't the Yoda. Per- he has a caller ID. They called in oh. talking about Sandler. Yeah. Um, and also, the strange thing here is that the moment Sandler gets the number, I guess the charges against him are dropped. <laughs> yes. The police are like, okay, we need to put a wire on you, and you need to get a confession. Yeah. Like, what? what's happening? This uh, yes. It sounds like this is taking this is longer than it is in the movie. This happens in about ten minutes after he ran away from police. Yeah, so the idea of him being on the run was, uh, you know, not very yeah, give significant. Us, come on, give us Adam Sandler throwing a rock at a he- police helicopter. Yeah. Give us Adam Sandler throwing a garbage can through a pizza place. Or making punchy traps. Turn that thermos into a laser pointer. Yes! And take, da- <laughs> and take down a pi- uh, like a police pilot. Yeah. No, an actual laser. Why not? He can oh, turn it into other things. <laughs> Let him use his umbrella and, like, get away Mary Poppins style. <laughs> yeah, this is so a you, you're you're saying wind. that he, he, he gets a, a high-power laser thermos and just, like, takes, like, shoots down the, air, the helicopter, slices it in two. Yes, and it explodes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. And you the see, he- it and, cut in half, and then a second later, it explodes. And inside the okay, helicopter, it, it, that's uh, Michael Chiklis. Yes. Imagine this, though. Imagine this. So, uh, that happens, and the rest of the movie plays out the exact same way. And then there's an after credit scene of uh, Adam Sandler in a red jumpsuit. He's in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, it's the longest yard. Yeah. Yeah, someone tells him, the Chris Rock shows up and tells him that he wants them for his football team. <laughs> so we're on the sting operation now. Yeah. He immediately folds and starts saying the safe word over and over. Yeah, pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin. she shows up and says, Hubie, I like you. And he says, pumpkin. Which is yeah, and our co-host Pumpkin kept like l- thinking that we were talking to him. Oh, oh yeah, I kind of forgot wants- about Pumpkin. He's sort of been in the corner, rotting away. Yeah, nobody wants to talk to your moldy ass Pumpkin. Fuck you. I I I, sp- I spray him with mold killer every day. <laughs> there's no, there's no mold growing. Yeah, but he still Whatever. smells horrendous, Kieran. And he is melting. Look, Pumpkin's fine. Pumpkin's happy. I think we need to hold a funeral for Pumpkin. Listen, Pumpkin might be happy, no. Rain, but are you happy? <laughs> if you have any parting thoughts on Pumpkin, email us a voice clip at tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. It's also really nice that, funeral. that Pumpkin seemed to travel with us to Denver. Yeah. Look, we, we, we need to keep we need to keep Pumpkin around at least until Halloween's over, guys. Come on. So Halloween will be over this Saturday, Kyo. Yeah, Halloween will be over when this episode has is finished. Yes. When you're yes. when you're done listening to this episode, <laughs> Halloween is officially over. Pumpkin, it's already in the trash. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. Basically, Julie Bowen's character is like, listen, I can't explain because there's no explanation that would make it this make any sense but I am in love with you and have been yeah, since the is, first grade. This is worse writing than most harem animes. <laughs> like the child, your average childhood friend in an anime has more motivation than this. Yeah. Like and the motivation being what? Oh, you at least have a flashback of the protagonist and the childhood friend doing something together. Yeah. That has some significance that resonates with the viewer, but we don't even get a flashback of them. 
You would at least, yeah, we should at least get a flashback of like a, a like a Renji Rukia style flashback of like them hanging yeah, out together. Yeah, like in the nineties, they're listening to Nirvana. All of their friends die. <laughs> Have Sandler do something nice for her. How about that? Yeah, yeah, just like something. he he knocks her out of the way of a moving car, and the car just deforms around his body when yeah. it hits him. <laughs> No, I was thinking he... more like it's lunchtime, and she doesn't have lunch today. Oh, and... so he brings her a bento box? <laughs> and they eat on the roof? Yeah, exactly. I was going to say he pushes her out of the way of a moving car with his thermos. Oh. <laughs> like, it's got a anti-gravity, a kinetic projector. Yeah. Or, like, he's got, like, Ooh. a magnet thermos that, like, m- like draws her to him. <laughs> no, it draws the car to him, and it flips over. <laughs> That would be fun, see? Yes. That's good stuff. Hey, we need to write movies. What if, a, what, if a de- what if a demon appears and yes! his and his katana uh, comes out of the, the thermos? <laughs> and... Okay, wait, hold on. I'm into this, but Are I need to know... you little Nikki? Well, yeah, hold on. I need to know, what's the demon's name? Um, just, I can't think of one. Stare. Uh, Doozle Dumb. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not interested unless a demon is named Roy. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Roy! The, no, Roy just does pranks. There's, there's no need to slice him in half with a katana. Oh, so like a demon prank, Adam Sandler's character. Yeah. Would this be a better <laughs> movie if Roy the demon was revealed to be like the person doing all this stuff? Yeah. Or maybe it's like that episode of SpongeBob, and it's Nosferatu. Yeah. Then yeah. yeah everyone's there you go. just amused. That's too like far in the past for Sandler, though. You Sandler's wheelhouse is like seventies to like late or like yeah early nineties. Well, one of Adam what, Sandler's daughters is watching like a sixties B movie. That's 50s. one thing about these movies is Sandler is really trying to channel like nineties energy into a twenty twenty film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If this were like released in theaters. In Halloween of like 1995, it would have made like a hundred thousand million dollars. It would, yeah. yeah, and it would have fit in just fine if they got rid of the smartphones, which don't have any plot relevance. But they didn't, and everyone's just like, "What is that? Well, what are those red <laughs> 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 So, um, after he uh, figures out that she is not the culprit, um, he steals a boat. Yeah, he goes and steals a boat uh, and finds out that the burner phone is located inside his house. And the big twist is taken directly from Friday the 13th. <laughs> and uh, it's his mom. Yeah. This kindly old woman is actually like a ravenous murderer. Well, she doesn't want her son alive. to be bullied. She also faces no comeuppance for trying to murder these men. Because she justified in killing them. Well... All these people do deserve to die, I think. For being mean? They're, yes, very mean. Yeah, mean people should be yeah, I mean, uh, murdered. That's Stairmaster's stance. They spend like look, eight hours look, out of the day harassing this man. Look, maybe look, maybe I would be on her side if he if if uh if he was like driven to suicide or something. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, because he's still alive, he's allowed to suffer further. He doesn't seem to be that unhappy, though. Oh. Yeah, he seems well, to be pretty happy with the scenarios that he's in. I don't know. Maybe he's just bottling it all up, like the Joker. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're really uh, per- portraying a lot of Joker energy onto this Sandler character. Well, it is 2020. Joker's yeah. on everyone's brains. But Hubie Dubois just strikes me as one of the rare 0% Joker-fied individuals. I guess that's why it's so fascinating, because he's not Joker-fied in 2020. Yeah, like, all the people bullying him, they're at least, like, 30 to, like, 70% Joker-fied. <laughs> yeah, that punk kid seemed to be, like, nearly 90% joker His hair was turning green! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the mom makes all the people she's about to burn alive explain why they were bullying him. <laughs> and they immediately make, like... Make big emotional statements about why they're jealous. Of, I think Mr. Of, Hennessy is like talking. The Hennessy couples are talking about sexual inadequacy. Yeah, there's and a Ray bit, Liotta reveals he faked dyslexia, so he didn't have to do as much schoolwork. The the line "I faked dyslexia, but I was just dumb" is so baffling. Yeah, people. If he faked dyslexia, that's yeah, very clever on his smart. part. Yeah, 
He tricked all the doctors. That's you got to be pretty good to do that. Yeah. Yeah, they probably had at least two doctors look at him. Yeah, especially in Sa- in Salem. Uh, yeah, in Massachusetts. Yeah. I think he did say doctors plural. He tricked mm. them. That's pretty smart. Um, and then this kid is just like, yeah, I'm a shit kid. I'm a big, I'm a big old bag of shit. Um, the police show so, up, prompting the mom to light the match. Also, the media is here. I don't know who gave them the inside tip. Was it Shaq or the mom or the love interest? I'm so the confused. The love interest is waiting on TV with bated breath to see how this pulls out. This is the most wild part of this movie to me. Is that yes. the the news shows up. <laughs> so, it's Halloween night. And the news is tipped off that someone a murder's about to go down. <laughs> I mean, in multiple, like multiple people being burned alive. That seems like a very big scoop. <laughs> That's they, what I would they do. Excitedly and earnestly go to the scene to get to get a live recording. What if it's Jake Gyllenhaal from Nightcrawler? Well, here's Still the other thing know. about what you're saying, Stare. It doesn't make sense for Shaq's character to do it because he doesn't know who's behind the burner phone. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make sense for Kevin James to tip them off because he doesn't know he doesn't know the mom did it until he gets there. Mm-hmm. So someone so just so the the news just was there and found out and was like, "We it's apparently a slow news day on Halloween." I think I think it's a love interest because she was waiting on the TV to watch what happened. Well, yeah, that's the other part that makes this baffling is that one the news crew is there. Knowing that a murder yeah. might be about to happen and are airing Give live. Give a live feed of what could be people being burnt alive. Yeah. <laughs> you, I don't okay. know if you can get away with that. It's okay. They got a five second delay. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess you're right. So um, the mom throws the match yes. and Sandler's like, no, we can't let this happen. So he gets out his trusty thermos, throws a little drop of soup on the match. Very nice shot there. I wish he had vomited on it, like, at the start of the film. You know, a little callback. He did vomit at the beginning of the film, that's right. Yes. Yeah. No, and instead, uh... the day, and everyone loves him. Yeah, everyone has immediately changed their mind on him. He becomes the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> this ending is so lazy. I need to see, I need to see that election. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting 2016 vibes like, from that one. That should have that should have just been the movie. Him getting running for mayor instead of this. <laughs> um, so he becomes the new mayor. He is now married to uh, his inexplicable love interest. His, He's apparently the, her the kids are father. calling him dad. <laughs> well, yeah, they're orphans. Um, he gets a he gets a ride downtown thanks courtesy of Kevin James, who is not at all who's who is cucked. In this movie. <laughs> no, but he seems very honored to serve him. It's an honor to be cucked by you, sir. He's the best guy in town. That's why everyone loves him. Yes. Oh, yeah, we end on uh, a great closing line, according to the stairs. Say it one more time for me, buddy. Let's lady in the trap, that bitch. Yeah, As he eats good. a sandwich and makes out with his, yeah, Jerobi wife. My new Papa John's pizza. Where I lady in the trap this. Do you guys know that Shaq owns a Papa John's? <laughs> Oh, that's cool. They, and they've like yeah. they've like made him the spokesman now that Papa John is like a hor- has been outed as a horrible racist. Oh, that's even better. So like all the Papa John's commercials I see now are just him being like, "I made a shakaroni pizza," and now and so, you're gonna you're gonna love it. So Keo didn't watch his credit scene, but me and Swanson did. Uh huh. And it was the credit sequence was way more interesting than the movie, just because of how it's. You know, uh, I don't know the French word. The vibe it was giving. Yeah. The je ne sais quoi. Yes. Yeah. It was, um, We got all these crazy film filters and after effects and motion blurring. They put more work into the credits than they did into the actual movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much the end of the movie, um... Werewolf guy and Ron, and Rob Schneider are apparently going back to the mental institution, and uh, everyone else is happy at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, final thoughts on this one? Uh, what was with the dead child at the end of the credits? Yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's the kid who was originally going to play Tommy. Oh, but he he died. It's uh, Cameron oh. Boyce. He's a Disney Channel kid. <laughs> was a Disney Channel kid. 
Wow, rest in peace. Uh, he died from complications of epilepsy, so we can't even make fun oh. of it. Oh, well, I mean, I wasn't going to make fun of it because he got dedicated in the Adam Sandler film. Like, what a way to be memorialized. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, this trash film that oh. I made bad on purpose is dedicated to this kid. Yeah, laughing time is over, folks. That's right. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is not the worst Sandler film I have watched, but it is not good. I would never, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it as a tune out for yeah, me. Don't, do not watch it sober. Yeah. yeah I, I think the verdict here is that if you watch this while high, you'll get mild amusement out of it. Otherwise, I only gave it just... two and a half stars on Letterboxd. God, that's too many. Hold on, what did you give yeah. Rise of Skywalker? Uh, I think I gave that also two and a half stars, that a... one and a half were for Palpatine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to give this a very, very blatant tune out here. Uh, no thanks. Yeah, I'm uh, going to revise my review. To maybe to <laughs> one star. Oh, 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 now that you've sobered up. Yes. Yeah, um, Sandler Sandler didn't uh, succeed in his goal of making the worst movie ever, but he did succeed in his goal of continuing to make sort of bad movies that people yeah. will watch for nothing because there's nothing else on. Yeah, very unambitious, very unfunny, and just not something I wanted to see. Although I did have one revelation here, Ooh. personal revelation here, is that. I can kind of understand why people will watch Adam Sandler films because, I don't know, there's this just kind of energy to them that is, I, I want to say kind of passive and kind of almost relaxing, I guess. Yeah, like, you don't no really worries. think about the world around you when you're watching a Sandler film. For all of his faults, he yeah, does it's... sort of tune into a wavelength that is like good vibes. Yes, because this is nothing like the real world. No, it's not so abstract. At all. It's abstract and people behave either like basically in a binary where they're either like being nice or they're being mean and then they can easily change from mean to nice. Yeah. And also there's a hot chick. There's a hot chick who lo- who likes you for no reason. <laughs> and that's sort of refreshing to know that that could yeah. that could maybe be a thing if this were the, if this were weren't the real world that we lived in. And if you're a hot chick and you enjoyed this episode, why not give us a review on iTunes? Five Star would go a great way to helping people find the pod. That's and true. Don't forget, forget to mention that you are a hot chick at the beginning of your review so that you have more credibility. Yeah, give us five stars and make the title, I am a hot chick. <laughs> and DM us, uh, DM us on at TV Tuners on Twitter if you're a hot chick. Yeah, and Stair will do the rest. He knows what the... Yes. Um, <laughs> almost got a Christopher Lambert there. <laughs> there you go. The quickening uh, has begun. So yeah, this is uh, this is sort of our Halloween bonus. Um, we have three more episodes of the Bleach Cast that you guys can look forward to uh, every Thursday. We're gonna round them out uh, right before Thanksgiving. Should be when we're wrapping up that. Yes. Um, Eyes and giving. That's for that's right. And uh, of course, our main feed TV tours where we talk about the latest in TV. Uh, and yeah, if you want to make a request. Uh, all you gotta do is go over to that Buy Me a Coffee page, make a donation. It's buymeacoffee.com slash TV Tuners. And you can request really anything. And also our free Discord's on there. Yeah. You can just click on the link and talk to us whenever you want. Um, and with all of that out of the way, I think that'll do it for this spooky edition. Uh, we'll what? be back next time with more TV goodness. Until then, keep watching. Bye. It's over. Holy shit, I'm gonna come! Hey folks, it's time for an Adam Sandler fact of the week. Did you know that Stairmaster has watched the vast majority of Adam Sandler films? That's right. <laughs>